Howdy folks. Today we're going to be talking uh, mostly about Mongoose sub documents. So we talked a little bit about them last time. So if we look at our user model here, we talked about how to create a new schema, uh, nest that schema inside here. Uh, we talked about how to do creation, that being just basically push um, or set in a similar way and obviously deletion. So today we're going to start off by talking about how do we update these nested objects? Well, we kind of already covered that a little bit and it's really pretty much exactly the same. Um, so we have this set here and we have the just nested index of what we actually want to update. So instead here we can just say user dot find one and update. And that will do the exact same thing. Remember we want our new true so that we get the new document returned. Um, so yeah, basically this, this pretty much does the exact same thing in Mongoose as it did in Mongo. So that helps a little bit. All right. So we start up our server. Let's create a user. Okay. Let's, um, insert some books Update user, let's add a book in here. So now if I go in here, I refresh, I can see my book. All right. So now I'm going to go into update book paste my user ID. I've got book ID zero and the title updated title. I run that. Oh, and it crashed user. Oh, user. Cause it's users. That's important. Make sure that your models are the right name users. All right, let's try that again. There we go. Now you can see that title has been updated. If we go to compass, it's updated. So basically updating a nested sub document in mongoose is exactly the same as it would be in, um, Mongo. Same thing with delete. Um, in this case we would have this find one. Um, we could say users dot find, um, one, right. And we've got a result. We've got our books and then, um, we would say users dot find one and update. Similarly here, we do that pull, right? And pull that in there and make sure that that works. It's Cause with the pull, we actually have to make sure that we have the book object. Um, so let's get that in there. All right. Grab our user ID. We go delete book. This is going to delete book zero. We run that and if we refresh, the book is gone. Why did it show up here? Because I forgot to actually tell the uh, find one and update to return new true. So this basically is exactly the same as it was in Mongo. Now there's a second way that Mongo supports for handling sub documents and they're not really sub documents. They're more linked documents, which Mongo itself doesn't really support that well. Why would you want to do that? Well, for our book here, right? Our books aren't necessarily going to belong to just one user. If there's a certain type of book, um, like JavaScript for dummies, that book might have multiple copies and multiple users might own a copy of that book. So you might only want to have that book one place so that you can update its data. Like if the ISBN changes or something like that and just have a link to it in the users in a uh, SQL, we would call that a one, a many to many relationship where many users can have many books and we would use a pivot table for it. Uh, Mongo doesn't have necessarily pivot tables, but what we can do is something a little different. So let's actually take this book schema and author schema, and I'm going to move that to their own model. Okay equals require mongoose. All right, so let's put our schema in here and then let's actually just create, I'm just going to steal this. Let's create a books model. Okay. Books with the book schema. And then we're going to export books. All right. So there's our book schema. So we can now add books and insert books and that will be perfectly fine. 
will be able to add all that in and they will be separate documents. Um, so I'm going to add in the controllers for that now and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so let's take a look at the collection or the API. So I just made a very simple API here, it takes in books, gets the title, the author, creates a sim very simple post route that creates the book. Simple. So that lets us create new books. Now, how do we hook them into our user? Well, uh, we're not going to be able to use this schema anymore like this because that is for a nested document that goes in there. What we're going to do instead is we're still going to use this, this brackets because that tells uh, Mongo that it's going to be an array. We're going to give an object and we're going to say type schema dot types dot object ID. Well, what does that mean? That's telling the system that, hey, this is an object ID. This is going to be an array of object IDs because that's how we reference documents. If they're not sub documents, we just reference their ID because the book is going to have its own ID. Now we have to tell it refer ref. So it references books. Did I call it books or book? I call it books. So that needs to be the same of collection ID is here, the model ID. And what that tells Mongoose, this is entirely a Mongoose thing, that tells Mongoose these object IDs are going to be found in the books collection. Okay? So now, if I go in here and let's go here and uh, create a book, um, I send that. Sample book, you can see, um, you see I already tested it once. Um, API book post title author because this is now just a book this book shows up with an ID okay so that's our book ID and if I go in here to compass which for some reason is on the other screen and I refresh that you can see we have that books collection now and it has that data in it so now we got to hook that up to our user we've got our books right and now we need our user to actually make use of that. So we're going to go back to our user API. We're going to go down here to our put our put here. So we've got books here, right? We're no longer going to be pushing or pushing books like this um, because books is a special array that Mongoose has to be treating a little differently. So instead we're going to say add to set books and then each books so that's going to add this book to or these book ids that we're giving to the set and these now need to be ids not um, um not actual full objects all right so let's give that a test so we're going to go in here all right this is the body the update for this particular user, I'm going to post the ID of my book. I'm going to go here, I'm going to copy that ID and I'm going to post that in here. So I'm not giving it the whole book object anymore, I'm just giving it the ID. Okay, I run that and you can see now that ID is in there. If I go back to the user collection, you can see it knows that this is an object ID, so it's turned it into that object ID, it's not just as a string. So that's how we can add that book. Well, now if I go here, grab my user ID, come in to get user, and I'm like, yeah, give me this user. What's going to give me that ID, right? That's, uh, that's not so helpful. We want to actually access that data from the user. We, we want to populate that data so we can still treat it as a sub document. Problem is, this is in a different collection. Well, this is where Mongoose um, gets a little bit of power. So let's say I go into this get by ID. I have my user find one. Okay. Um, and that's totally fine. Instead of this thing, I'm going to actually start using the promise model because we're going to need that for this. So I've got a dot then. Okay. And that actually is going to give me the result. Um, and then I'm actually going to do a 
I think I need another. No. And then I'm going to put dot catch. And that's going to be my error handler. All right. And so I'm going to take this. I'm going to pop this in here. Error. What is it not liking? OK, it doesn't like that. All right. So why have I done a dot then? Because I need to call some more. I need to call a couple more parameters here. And Mongoose is promisified. We're not using it when we use this callback thing, but you can always do a promise. In this case, I need that because I actually need to call populate. And then I'll tell it populate books. That is going to tell Mongoose that, hey, when you get this data, whatever's in books, go ahead and look up the referenced object and populate that in there. So let's give that a try. All right, and hopefully I did my promise correctly. Now, if I run this, now you can see that book is now populated into that array instead of the ID. So you can see very simple, you just put that populate on there and voila, Mongoose goes and looks up that reference document and pulls that data in for us to look at. It knows what to pull in because we've told it right here what reference, where that ID belongs to. So if you give it an ID that isn't in there, it's probably just going to give you null. But yeah, it's this. so this is a very simple way of making that pivot table. So um, now, how do we delete this? Well, it's pretty much um, the same way as we'd handle it before. You can use the um, the pull method. And book index in this case is just going to be an ID, right? But you can still use that pull method to delete it. And so let's actually try that. If I grab this in here, say delete user book. I send that, and now it's deleted that book. Um, the specific update book at this point, this no longer makes sense. And that's kind of the nice thing about this. I don't need, if I'm updating the book title, I don't need to do this anymore because book is no longer a sub document of the, um, of the user. It is actually just part of the book. So I could actually just have a book API that does an update on the book by ID. Because this is now a top level document, I don't need to go into that dot notation. You should still use um, sub documents like we learned before whenever possible in Mongo because they are just more efficient and they handle a little bit better. And that's part of the power of Mongo. But if you need a document that is going to be referenced by multiple different things and you want to just have a reference to it, similar to that many to many in SQL, this is how you do it. All right. Um, bum, 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 bum. I think, yeah, I think that's kind of it for this one. Um, so what we've gone over is how to set up a reference to another document in Mongoose. Um, how to actually populate that reference. It's basically the same exact thing um, as before. Um, how to add that, you add to set. I think um, push might also work in this case, but add to set is just another um, fancy way. Try it. Try it with push. If it doesn't work, then go back to add to set and use that instead. Um, yeah. And then deletion, of course, when you're deleting the user, it's totally fine. It doesn't need to really change anything because you're just deleting that user, which leaves the book behind, but that's kind of okay. If you need to actually delete the books as you're deleting the user inside of this callback here, you have access to the result, which is the old user. And at that point you could actually access the books array and delete those um, with the same like find and delete. All right. And then how to delete what's well, just the same exact poll and that poll still works because we still have the array that has been stored in Mongo. It's just now tracking object IDs rather than the full object. It's really um, this reference here that really hooks that up. 
And then last but not least, if you need to actually fetch that new data, um, all you have to do is use this populate. Note that you do want to use the then, the promise API. So a lot of the stuff we've been using before is the callback API where we pass a callback in here. Um, you cannot use the populate in this case, um, at least not in the same format. If you want populate, you have to use the promise because this is more of a builder um, sort where you can see you're doing this thing, then you're calling some manipulation data on it, then you're processing the result finally at the end. So yeah, that's all for now. Um, next video, we'll go into a couple of uh, more complicated aggregation stuff with Mongoose, and then I think that'll be the last one for this series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.